So we have now come down to the water's edge. Anoop is going to give us a, um, or has organised a river trip for us. So we're going to go up the Hoogly and um, and have a look at what's going on there. Do you have water with you? Yep, yep. So we're on the boat, this is an exclusive tour, it's just um, Jenny, me and Anoop um, and the uh, two um, guys running the boat. So we're going to have a two to three hour tour going up and down the river um, looking at various places, so absolutely fascinating. So we're heading up river now, which is where the, the river comes from the Himalayas and goes out to the sea. When I was finished, he was going back to England. From the sea, he noticed this river. So he wanted to recce that. He had no idea. So he just came in, came in. After sailing 100 km up river, he saw this fantastic, beautiful place. And then he started more Reiki. Is there anybody came before them? So he saw that French came, Portuguese came, Dutch came, but they did not stop here. They went further 40 km to 60 km. And they stayed on the other side of the river. The other side of the river, there was a village called Hugli. And that is the reason this is called Hugli River. It is not Hugli, it is the Ganges. It is the Holy River. So they are settlement there. Why? Because they wanted to use the business center called Kashim Bazaar. Kashim Bazar was the Muslim settlement, that Mughal settlement, we call Nawab settlement, which is another up 100 km from there. So now 120, 60, 70 km, the river was continuously used by these group of people to use their business and go back to the Europe this way. So they did not, they did not go to south of India. So when you are establishing your settlement in south of India, you are losing one month. So this is what Job Chanok understood and wrote to East India Company, why we are struggling in South of India, we can stay here. Yes. And those who are doing business, we can also use the same business place, Kashim Bazar. And if we can deal with this French, Portuguese, Dutch, when they will be going back to the sea, down river, we can hold them, they can pay tax to us. Right. That is why eventually they have defeated Dutch, they have given all their output to the British and gave the, the British gave them in exchange Sumatra. Portuguese they agreed to pay tax to them. French did not agree, so they had to fight three battles. All the battle they lost. Finally, they agreed to pay tax to them. So this is how Calcutta settlement started, 1690. Eventually, 1717. This happened after 1717. 17 that Dr. William Hamilton came yes. when Mughal Emperor Farukshir was sick, okay. so he was yes. treated. Yes. He was suffering from malignant distemper. He said after the treatment, he said, what do you want? He said, we want a piece of land to do business. Mm -hmm. Where is that? They had no idea. So they said in the map, this is the place. Yeah. So he ordered the local man, okay, you sell it to the East India Company. This is how the East India Company settlement here. And the deal was 1,300 rupees only. They purchased that land from the original landlord of Calcutta. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? Slowly, slowly they established Slowly, slowly more people are coming. They had a feeling that we should have a protection of ourselves so that Fort William was built. 1756, when the Mughal came to know the British are not doing only business, they have a fort. That is why Calcutta was under attack. The Battle of Calcutta, 1756. That time, Lord Clive was not here. He was in the southern part. So after this battle, he came. And he planned an attack on Mughal army. 180 km from Calcutta, Murshidabad. The Battle of Plassey. Plassey is the place, the battlefield. Yeah. 
that was the turning point of the Indian history. When he was preparing himself, he was taking the who can help us there. So local Maharaja, he agreed to help Lord Clive with his 2200 army. Okay. Another one man in the Mughal army, in the, in the Mughal side, who was not quite happy with the Nawab, you know Nawab, the local governor of the Mughals. Okay, yeah. So he was not a very good boy. He was the main Nawab, but at the age of 22, he was the most notorious character of that time. No ladies, no women can be around him. Okay. He would pick up anyone. Yeah. Even the man who is to fund him, the joint community, he also ab abused the young girl married in, a, in his palanquin. So that is how his uncle was disturbed by him and he wanted to help British people secretly, provided if the battle goes on the side of the British, he should be, he was offered a good, you know, that uh, deal at the end of the war. Yeah. And that was the three power together. Right. One side, Mongol, big army, 60,000 along with French. Other side, Lord Clive, only 900 soldier, had cannon, brilliant, you know, the soldier, because he kept his cannon under cover. It was in August, monsoon time, so that worked. Yes. They were over, probably overconfident, they did not keep their cannons under cover, so yes. they did not fire. Secondly, the man, the local Maharaja, he knew the circuit, he could have been open this, this, this direction, which way you can make an attack. And third, another support from inside. So these three attacked, yes. the Mughals lost the battle. Right. And this is Lord Clive. Oh, he made the hero yes. of India, yes. the, the, the Clive of India. Yes. So he came back and rest of the time he lived in Calcutta very happily. Well, many, many way people say that he took money. Of course he took money. Yes. So then it's such a big country after establishing and such a man. He was at the end of the day, he was a soldier. He was not an intellectual like William Jones, like Lord Cunningham. This is the, he was a soldier, so obviously he wanted to take money back. Yes. So that's a different story. But that was the landmark of the history of India that Lord Clive won the battle, came back, and the whole refabrication of Calcutta started. Right. On the site where you saw the fort William yes. before, yes. over there all the beautiful buildings, all from the East India Company time. Yes. So this is how the whole Calcutta started yes. rebuilding. Okay. So 1757, is a landmark. Yeah. So this, is built, this is Harrah Station Harrah built in 1854. 54. The first railway station of India is in Mumbai. We call Victoria Terminus. Same year, Calcutta Station was built. But it has got a unique feature. It's the only station you can drive your car inside. What we call cabin. The Viceroy used to go with the acting characters. So you could, if you drive, if you take another train from here, buildings behind, oh, behind, behind the green one yeah. these are the old warehouses three warehouses were very famous one is Hastings warehouse one is St. Rana warehouse one is Clive warehouse oh. who is still with me standing here <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can't believe it <laughs> I will have to give a tour to this great <laughs> founder father of British India <laughs> so this is of the old warehouses all the way along the river here.
this is the tide coming in and you can see it all the way along there. was the situation at that time. Yes. And then, when you are talking about the history, these kind of detailed history, how many people are interested? Mm. How many people read that book? Yeah. As I say, this particular, you get in touch with any Bengali people because I raised, I raised myself in a, hist in a period when we used to see the theatre, drama, everywhere, Lord Clive, everywhere the British people were accused. Why? They killed that Nawab of Bengal. Now this Nawab of Bengal, they say that the first, last free Nawab of Bengal, what do you mean by free? Yeah. India was not free, yeah. it was under the Turkish people. Yeah. So this is under debate. But as a young boy, I could not, even, I had to hear and heard that. And eventually when I was reading more and more, it was things getting clear. One hand you are saying that Nawab Shiraj Dola was the worst man. Yeah. Another hand you are saying he was killed, so sad because he was the last Nawab. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was a notorious man yeah, yeah. and he was killed by them. Mm. But after killing the people who initiated to take the battle against 60,000 people with 900 soldiers, have you thought that what kind of, yeah. you know, that temperament you should have yeah, yeah. to have the guts to fight with 60,000 yeah. people? Yeah. And no matter, somebody was helping you. It is yeah. one kind of suicide. You are committing yeah. suicide. Yeah. Jumping in 60,000 people yeah. and assurance you are getting from a local Maharaja. Yeah. Another assurance you are getting from a man in the Mughal side. Mm. So these are just assurance. Yes. If that Mughal man betrayed his own people, he could have betrayed you yes, also. Trust so yeah. that is also a, it's double risk. Yes, yeah. you, are, you, are, you are based on his commitment. Yes. So all these things you have to, this kind of history or discussion with who you can do. If he's an intellectual or super intellectual, then otherwise for common people when my I was born after independence, all the history was pointed out to accuse British people. Yes. We came out from that particular grievance. We saw people are dying, we saw this, we saw that. Historians came out, they were puppets of the government, mm -hmm. so they started driving. This is the, what they suited them. Yes. And we carried with this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any chance to review that what actually happened. Yes. And nobody told us that a the Lord Clive man you say he looted India, but he defeated the yeah. other side who were also looters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you don't say. Mm. Secondly, you say Lord Clive looted India, went back. But the man who has not looted India, William Jones, why don't you know about him? Mm. The man who has given you a great institution like Asiatic Society, yes. Indian Museum, a world famous institution in Calcutta. You don't talk about them. Yeah. The man who has given you first school, Hindu school, first college, Hindu college, first university, first Sanskrit college, you don't talk about them. So one side you are talking about only the people who have done some mischievous job. That was normal at that time yes, of the history. The time, Everybody yes. was looting India. Yes. Arabians came to loot India. Mm. Nobody wanted to kiss India. <laughs> Portuguese, French, Dutch, nobody wanted to kiss India. Everybody wanted to loot India and wanted to give their religion on us. Yes. Mughals, mm. Turkish, Arabians, everybody, they came with gunpowder. They mm. killed Indian people like insects. Yes. We did not know what is gunpowder. Mm. We had only one little short. That also we forgot to use because Buddhist philosophy was so much so that that everybody was carried by why should I fight? Why should I kill? That was the India. Yeah. And then it was like a killing field for seven, eight hundred years. You don't want to discuss one all these incidents, you want to discuss only one incident. So this kind of thing yeah. is subject to be you know, a, a good deal of arguments. Yeah. Simply, one particular incident cannot be the yeah. lamppost of yeah. the whole history. There can be several lampposts. You have to walk lamppost to lamppost yeah. to verify that particular period. For me, Job Charuk is the main man. Yes. We say that Indian Renaissance started with him. Yes. In our great historian, Dr. Niyaranjan Roy, say that. Mm -hmm. How? Think about he was going back to England. 
from Chennai, suddenly from the sea, he saw this river. He sailed in just for curiosity. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, he heard a screaming from a lady on the bank, and he saw some people were about to throw a lady in the same funeral pyre with her husband. Mm -hmm. He got puzzled. He had his gun. He fired from his gun. People ran away, and the lady was shivering. He picked up that lady and gave her full, you know, confidence yes. that nobody will kill you anymore. And eventually, he decided this is the place. Look, this is the place. Job channel came. This is the particular place. This was the last village. This is the village called Kolikata. Kolkata. Three villages. Yes. Kolikata, Govindapur. Sorry, that this was Shutanuti. Yeah. I'm sorry. This was Shutanuti. Then Govindapur is the British part of Calcutta, eventually established. And Kalikata, where the, the sign, the Calcutta cell was deep there. Yes. The name after Goddess Kali. Yeah. So this was the place where Job Chanak landed. Yeah. Imagine now at that time, he picked up the lady, married her gave birth of three children. In Dr. Nyan Rai said, that is a renaissance. Mm. The first time somebody, though he is a foreigner, doesn't matter. Yes. He's a part of the world. And injustice was justified. Yes. Injustice was not justified. Mm. And somebody took an, if, that event. He happened to be here. So if I may tell you, the God brought mm. Job Chanak at that particular very moment. The yes. lady was, about many at that time, hundreds of ladies were killed the funeral pile yes. every day. If you see, a record says about 300 ladies were killed by the people saying they are going for Sati. Yes. Because the Brahmins, they did a lot of mischievous job. They have, the, you know that, they, actually this is an interesting group of people, look, they are the sand collectors, very interesting group of people. boats are full of sand and they're hand dredging it and then using it for the roads and setting it for roads and all sorts of other building work. These are remnants of the statues floating down the river that we saw earlier in our talk. So in this monastery, there are about a thousand monks living here. It's rather interesting. So these are the bathing ghats, and the, every bathing ghat has to have a temple to Shiva there, which you can see the sort of orange and red roof. Keep going, temple complex. Small temples are all Shiva temples. This is another temple complex. So this is a priest and a man in a white coat and he's brought an offering down. So he's in mourning and he's making an offering to the river. So he's making an offering to the departed soul. So these are the boats which are having the sand unloaded by the coolies. They bring the sand in sort of baskets or buckets on their head. This is a painting of what happens on the last day of the festival. The Indian ladies all put vermilion on each other's uh, foreheads. 
and this is a painting detect, uh, depicting that. Fascinating boat trip. What do you think? We yeah. learned a lot about yeah, uh, lot of Hindu people. rituals, yeah. the bathing, the head shaving, and all that. Also, the people who are working along here, the bamboo people, sand the sand bridges, people. Yeah. yeah, it was very, very, uh, yeah, it was lovely to see that and culturally very interesting. So, onwards and upwards, we're um, continuing on with the day.